So today we are doing a deep dive on something a little different. Right. We're looking at political satire. Okay. And specifically, um, this book I found called, are you ready for this? The VP's Key Accomplishments, A Journey Unburdened by the Passage of Time. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on. Just the title alone. It really tells you you're in for a ride. It really does. And that's what, you know, that's what drew me to this. It's like, <laughs> what what are we talking about here? What is a key accomplishment? Right. So I thought this would be fun to take a look at how satire, because this is obviously satire, can be used to comment on, you know, these political figures. Absolutely. And especially someone in a position like the vice president, right? It's it's inherently a tricky role. It feels like it. Because you have all this this potential power, but it's all very, very limited by the president's agenda, by their own ambitions. Right. You're always second fiddle. Exactly. And this book seems to really hone in on that. It does. Using humor to sort of point out the absurdity of it all. Okay, so the description here talks about, get ready for this one, mastering the subtle art of background presence. Oh, the art of being seen and not heard. Exactly. And like, is that a bad thing? I don't know. Well, that's what satire makes you do. It makes you question these assumptions. Okay, yeah. About what we expect from our leaders. So they even go on... It says that this VP is being praised for avoiding responsibility. Like, that's a good thing, apparently. And that's the brilliance of it. By presenting these traditionally negative qualities as achievements, it forces you to reevaluate. What does it actually mean to be successful in that role? I mean, let's be honest. Have there been vice presidents who maybe excelled at avoiding responsibility? Maybe. I'm not naming names. Well, and that's what's so clever about satire, right? It doesn't have to name names. It can hold up a funhouse mirror to the position itself, to the whole system. All right, I've got another one. They're praising this VP for, and I quote, masterfully delegating every crucial decision, ensuring plausible deniability at all times. See, that's what I love. It's so accurate to a certain extent, but also so exaggerated. Oh, it's definitely exaggerated. But that exaggeration is what makes it funny and what makes it thought-provoking. Because we've all been there, right? Maybe not on a vice presidential level. Of course. But that art of delegation, it's a real thing. It is. And this book seems to be celebrating it in all its glory. Okay, this one, this one might be my favorite. Looking interested while someone else drones on about soybean tariffs? I mean, that's a skill. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. And it speaks to the often ceremonial nature of the role. The endless dinners, the handshakes, the speeches where you have to pretend to be invested in. Soybean tariffs. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. At least... That's what this book wants us to believe. Right. It makes you wonder, are we looking for a VP who is a dynamic policy wonk or one who can charm a room full of dignitaries while secretly thinking about what they're having for dinner? That is the question. I think that's what I love about this whole satirical take. It's not about bashing any one person or party. It's about using humor to make us think about the role itself, what we value, what we expect. And to maybe laugh at the absurdity of it all, because let's be honest, politics can be pretty absurd. That it can, my friend. That it can. So if you're looking for a way to engage with politics, but maybe need a break from the 24-7 news cycle, I highly recommend checking out some political satire. I second that. It's a great way to stay informed, but also to keep your sanity. And who knows, you might even learn something along the way. Exactly. All right. That's our deep dive into the world of political satire. Join us next time when we, uh, well, who knows where we'll end up. Sounds like a plan.